Hi guys, welcome to Chugging Along. I'm Sam. And I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and welcome to today's video. So if you've been watching our video, you will have seen us start our journey from Thiel to Clanglocklin for our summer narrowboat adventure. So in this video, we are going to be taking you on a trip between Marlow and Sonning, which is just outside Reading on the River Thames. And we are going to be discussing the expenses how much it costs to travel on one of Britain's most beloved waterways, the one that we're on. So yes, from mooring to the river conditions to the licensing and all of that stuff, we're going to tell you all that information. Being on the River Thames is quite an interesting topic because um, it can be one that maybe divides boaters. You find some boaters who are much more comfortable being on the canals and then you find those that actually really enjoy being on the River Thames. They enjoy that connection to nature. They enjoy being out on a wider body of water. Take our friends, Josh and Amber, for instance, on their Dutch barge. You may have watched that in one of our previous videos. They much preferred being on the River Thames and they couldn't wait to get back on it. And we refer to these individuals affectionately, I must add, as Thamesies because of their love for the River Thames. However, Sam and I consider ourselves canal folk, mm, don't we? Absolutely. We feel a lot more comfortable chugging down a muddy ditch compared to flowing down one of God's veins mm. at his mercy. What does that say about us? Mm. Well, you can make your mind up. And there are also more risks, I suppose, from being on the river that we have to take into consideration. So we always get a little bit nervous before we actually go onto the River Thames. But that being said, Every time we've gone onto the Thames, we've actually really enjoyed it. We have, it's some of our best moments. We reckon. have actually, yeah. yeah. So let's get started on today's journey. And here we are in Marlow Town Centre. And we moored near a park, which was just after Marlow Lock, so a bit closer to London. And that was free for the first night. Um, and then after one night, it would be five pounds a night. So it was good that we got that for free. Um, most of the moorings that we did use were free as well. However, that being said, when we did moor in Henley Town Centre, we did have to pay £10 for the privilege to moor there for the night. And it was the tenor man who came and knocked our boat the following morning to collect that £10 hey. off us. Yeah, you're right. you the tenor man. Yeah, yeah, just one night. Just one night, yeah, we're leaving today. Cheers, man. Uh, Mary L. Mary L. Yes, sir, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, but I well, suppose there's a reason for that. It's a beautiful place to moor, Henley, and in order to control the number of boats that do stay there and how long they stay there, it does make sense taking that money off them. And also, when you're on the River Thames, there are farmers' fields where you will see farmers with signs up where they do also charge for mooring usually anything from five to ten pounds there are free moorings available on the thames and if you have the knowledge there are wild moorings as well that being said tim and i we didn't have the knowledge as far as the wild moorings were concerned and also we were in quite a rush so we wanted to make sure we could get to places where we definitely knew it was safe for us to moor we unlocked the padlock on the bow doors, we put the tiller bar and chuggles the frog in just to get ready. And at our mooring here you will see that we were so snugly fit in and uh, in this occasion here we wanted to reverse out. So Sam actually uh, untied the stern line first. So yeah, when we leave today, we're trying to get to the lock which is just up that way there. So we're thinking how can we get the boat out? So we were thinking that we wanted to let the stern go out that way, like that. So uh, that's the plan, and then just reverse outwards. So yeah, we want to get the stern out, that's the plan. Let's see how that goes. We reversed out, then went forwards, and off we went to the very short distance towards Marlow Lock. 
So it was a sunny Sunday and it was probably the first sunny Sunday since restrictions, lockdown restrictions have been partially lifted. So because we were anticipating there being a lot of traffic on the Thames, we decided to leave very early at eight o'clock in the morning. Unfortunately, that meant there would be no lock keeper at the first lock to help us out. Um, but that's fine because, you know, we're canal folk. We're used to doing our own lock, so it wasn't a problem for us at all. So at Marlow Lock and the lock keeper's cottage, we saw a flood line from 1894 there. So you can see it's really, really high. We were lucky that when we were stuck on the Thames, it was just red boarded and fast flowing and not flooding like there. So yeah, you always have to look at the positive. Um, so yeah, then uh, we left that lock and Sam got back on as we went under the Marlow Bridge and it's the first time we'd seen it since we finished the race and we temporarily moored underneath there. It was a narrow boat versus train race. If you haven't seen that video, it's available to watch now. So Marlow is an absolutely beautiful town and actually it's in Buckinghamshire which we hadn't realised at the time but, but that's great because that actually adds another county which we've been to on Mary L. So so far we've done Northamptonshire, Warwickshire, Oxfordshire, Berkshire and now Buckinghamshire. What will come next? It's an area with a lot of money. Look at this futuristic box in the garden, very posh. Would you like this as your home office? As we were cruising, I went downstairs to make a cup of tea and as I opened up the curtains, I was greeted by the sight of rowers. This is something that obviously we have to get used to on the Thames, sharing the river with rowers. And to be honest, for me, there's always that fear that we have to keep an extra eye on what they're doing because we don't want Marielle hitting any rowers. Yeah, but I think they have a bigger fear of them being ploughed into by a narrow boat. We saw some beautiful wild mooring spots here where you often see people tying their boat around a tree. So just imagine this, um, if the ground is very soft, you've pinned in your boat and the river's running really fast, surely you would feel a little bit nervous about waking up one morning and seeing that your boat, well you are floating down the river without you even knowing about it. Um, you know, that is a reason why we prefer being on the canals. It's everything's just a little bit calmer. The next lock was Temple Lock, where in the race we were held up by the Toffee Thames Cruiser. This time it was a lot more relaxing trip through the lock. And obviously we weren't engaged in a race and it was just nice to relax and take it in on this beautiful morning. Yeah, it was a really nice day that we had on the Thames and let's talk about our license now. So yeah, we booked a seven day license and we actually just cruised for six days on that but we covered quite a lot of ground. We went from Reading to Marlow and then Marlow to Oxford. So we have a standard CRT license and that doesn't cover cruising on the Thames, that just cruises the canal network. So we had to buy a pass that was going on for 80 quid and that uh, cost obviously depends on the length of your boat and of course the kind of boat that you have as well you know but you can get a CRT gold license which does cover you for the Thames and other rivers as well as the canals but we knew that we were only going to do it once uh, or twice in the year so yeah we decided that we would stick to that and when you add everything up there it's effectively 10 quid a day to go on the Thames you know for the cost of it just for the license itself after we actually went through Temple Lock, we got to go under a beautiful wooden bridge, and which is not something we get to do very often, I think, whilst being on the River Thames. And very quickly, we managed to make our way to our third lock of the day, and in under an hour as well. I mean, the lock keeper there, he was very helpful and obviously helped us get through there as quickly as he could. But it was just good to see that we're making a lot of ground, especially considering that we were going upstream on the River Thames. Okay. Should we be filming now? Does it look like it's yep. coming? I think it is. Yes. Not exactly the brightest screen, so just press it to film. Uh, it should be filming already, the red button. You okay, yep. Right. Once we got through <laughs> our third lock, we then had a pleasant cruise, travelling past lovely cliffs and amazing sights and houses, and going pretty quickly upstream. And um, that's another thing, because you have to think about it can be a lot more costly when you're travelling upstream going on the River Thames because going upstream requires more power and as a result you use more diesel. So it can be quite hard and it is quite hard for us to quantify how much we did use but before we actually embarked on our trip we made sure that we filled up our tank and we 
had both of our jerrys filled up too. So there are techniques to save fuel, such as when you're going downstream, you should travel closer to the middle of the river to be in the flow and get the help from that. And when you're going upstream, travel further to the side so then you aren't getting pulled backwards against the flow. Um, but you know, realistically, when you are doing it and you're actually out there, you're not really thinking about those kinds of things. And, you, know, you know, when we quantify overall, did we use more fuel than usual on the Thames? Yes, we did. But then saying that, we covered more ground. So we can't really say that fuel on the Thames is more expensive overall, which is a good thing. We started approaching the town of Henley and there were lots of rowers as we made our way through it. And that can be a positive on the Thames. But we've already spoken about how we can be nervous about knocking into them, but it does add a lot of variation really um, to your journey, and it, which is very interesting and helps to make it more fun to travel on. And as a narrowboat, you actually are more likely to be a minority and that does also make it feel a bit more like an adventure as well. Yeah, it does actually. Do you remember when we had the lady that was shouting at us with a megaphone telling us to stay in the centre of the river to avoid the rowers? And, you know, usually I don't like being shouted at, but I thought that was, there was something about that. I thought, oh, okay, this is quite cool. You know, everyone's using the river differently and you definitely wouldn't get that on a canal. You know, what you'd probably get shouted at. We start going through the town of Henley and then we go under the fantastic bridge. Lock number four was Marsh Lock. And we continue to see some beautiful sights at this point on the River Thames, including what are known as slipper boats. Slipper because I suppose they look like slippers, but Tim actually refers to them as wine boats because everyone we seem to see on these boats were drinking lots of wine. <laughs> So then we went through Ship Lake Lock, which was the final lock on this lovely cruise. And uh, just as we came out there, we saw a wonderful off-grid setup with a lot of Thamesies there doing their thing. And this is where we can talk about the conditions of the river, because when the Thames is red boarded, which is usually the whole of winter, that means that you don't have to move your boat at all. So if you've got a good spot, and you feel comfortable when you know how to get all your amenities and all that, you get a free mooring in a wild environment, which can be very attractive to a lot of people. So yes, yeah, Sam, that is my question to you. Do mm. you think that you could live on the River Thames <laughs> wild on a wild mooring? I, it would, it's possible, but it's a bit difficult. I think you'd need to have a vehicle, um, a car, anything that you could use to get you to places where you can get your facilities and resources because you are quite cut off. And um, also, I don't, I mean, there is a fuel boat that does go on the Thames, but once the Thames is red boarded, I don't know how likely it is for yeah, that, that. that fuel boat to actually get to you. So mm. it is very important to get things like diesel, coal, wood for um, your stove, especially in winter. So, yeah. Definitely would need a vehicle. We arrived in Sonning, which marked the end of our journey for that day. Um, we moored on a high bank, which was free, so that was great. And we got told by another boater, actually, that we were moored up right in front of Yuri Geller's old house, which was a bit of a coincidence, uh, seeing that as we, as when we were moored in Theo, we were moored up next to Kate Bush's old house. So I wonder which other celebs' ex-property Marielle will be moored outside next. After a long day on the river, we had a taste for fish and chippy chips. And we also fancied a walk, so we put one-on-one -on -one together and off we went. On our walk, we actually went past a posh pub. And you know it's a posh pub when you see pods in the garden. And that's another thing. Because the Thames is obviously quite prosperous. So when you see places where you can go out to eat and drink, it can also be a little bit expensive. 
So we walked up that hill or ran up that hill like Kate Bush to Terry Ling's fish and chip shop come Chinese ch uh, takeaway. It's what's known as a Chinese chippy. And sadly we got there too early so it was closed. We were gutted. But Terry saw the disappointment on our face and he opened the place for us. So thank you so much Terry for that. Uh, we got our chips and we took them back to the boat and I must say that they were delicious. We've got a question for our audience here. This is completely uh, not related to boating in any way. Is anyone in the know here? Do fish and chip shops like come Chinese takeaways like Chinese chippies do they use a different kind of oil because they kind of I thought it sort of had a peanutty oil kind of taste they were absolutely amazing you know so good so that that is a question in conclusion it only really cost us 10 pounds a day to cruise on the river thames using the license that we had which wasn't that bad but obviously it's still an extra cost for us um, there could be an extra cost if we had to pay for mooring at other particular points but there was only that one cost mm. that we had uh, in henley so again not too expensive it also must be said that we didn't go to any pubs with pods in it as well so that also saved us <laughs> a bit of money yes. as well so let's have a look at today's cruising statistics so we did 14 miles today which is pretty good with six locks and that was all within six hours thus making our average speed 2.3 miles an hour and our trip average is now 1.9 miles an hour. So yeah, that is the end uh, of today's video. So join us next week as we continue our cruise to Oxford on the River Thames and we actually meet up with our winter mooring buddy, Jeff, as we cruise in convoy for the first time so we can discuss how that works and if we enjoyed it and what we learned doing that so yeah we're excited to share that with you next week thank you guys for watching today's video and uh, let us know would you like to cruise on the river thames in a narrow boat comment with your answers in the comment section below and remember guys no matter what you do in life you got to remember to keep, keep chugging, chugging.